Hi, and welcome to this key quiz. So this is all about, can we look at a piece of music and work out which key it's in? Now, if you're familiar with keys, well, this should be a task that you'll be able to manage quite easily. If you're not so sure about your keys, then you may want to have in front of you something called the circle of fifths which is very easy to find online. And in fact, if you don't know about the circle of fifths or you're not at all sure about keys, you may wish to put this film to one side for a moment and have a look at our free film on YouTube, which is all about understanding the circle of fifths. And that will tell you how all the keys work, how major and minor keys relate to each other, and which flats and which sharps you need for any particular key. So that is kind of information that's quite useful if you're gonna set about doing this quiz. But let's have a little look and see what we think is going on. You may just want to have a little pause and see if you can work out the keys of these four melodies on the board for yourself, and then you can come back to me and see if your conclusions match up with mine. Okay, welcome back. Now. Let's have a look at melody number one. We've got two flats in the key signature, B flat and E flat. So in the circle of fifths, on the circle of fifths, you'll see that two flats is flagging up two possible keys, B flat major or G minor. So which do we think it is? Do we think it's B flat major or do we think it's G minor? Well, one thing to look for is, do we see any accidentals during the course of the piece? I'm looking through here, I've got my two flats in the key signature. As I scan through this, I can't see any other flats or sharps. Now that's not necessarily a definitive position, but usually it means that you're in a major key. Because if you're in a minor key, you're probably raising the seventh degree of the scale. You're possibly raising the sixth degree of the scale as well. You might find places where the sixth or the seventh are being raised and other places where they're not. That's all a big indicator of a minor key. If you don't see accidentals, chances are you're in a major key. So B flat major was our option. As it turns out in this melody, the first note's B flat, the last note's B flat, so it sort of confirms B flat major. And if I just play that to you, here's a chord of B flat major. The first little tune goes like this. So it sounds like a major piece, doesn't it? So there we are, B flat major is our first example. And by the way, another little trick when it comes to key signatures, when you're dealing with flat keys, if you look back from the last flat to the flat before, this flat will give you the major key. Because you've got two flats, then go back one, you see B flat, B flat major. If you had three flats, you'd have B flat, E flat, A flat. So go back one from the A flat, you get to E flat. You know, it's an E flat major. So if the circle of fifths isn't quite to hand or you've gotten a slight muddle with your keys, it's another way of doing it. Um, when you have sharp keys, if you're looking for a major key, you look at the last sharp and you say, that will be the seventh degree of the scale in a major key. So if the last sharp is G sharp, which it is in number two, then it could be an A major. So that's another way into it. Or for number two, you can look on your circle of fifths and think three sharps, go around the circle on the outside, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, which two keys does it tell us about? And it tells us that the options are that we're in A major or in the relative minor of A major, which is F sharp minor. So we're now looking through this thinking, well, is it A major or is it F sharp minor? It begins with F sharp, there's another F sharp here. It finishes on F sharp, so maybe that's an indicator of F sharp minor. Pieces of music aren't always quite that obvious, but in this case we've got a big hint of F sharp, haven't we? But we've also got E sharp here, we've got E sharp there. Now, why would the E sharp be there if we were in A major? And the answer is it wouldn't be. However, if we're in F sharp minor, the seventh degree of the scale of F sharp minor is E. 
So if I raise E, it's going to become E sharp. So that's the other thing that confirms we're in the key of F sharp minor. So here's a chord of F sharp minor. And here's how melody number two goes. And hopefully you can hear the minor tonality. So there you have it, F sharp minor. Okay, now let's have a look at number three. Because at first sight, you can look at number three and think, oh great, no sharps, no flats in the key signature. So it must be in C major. And then you might look through and think, oh, it's got a few flats, or it must be in A minor then, because we've said that if it, there are accidentals around, it may be flagging up a minor key. Well, hold on, because if it were A minor, well, the raised seventh degree of A minor would be G sharp. If we had a raised six, that would be F sharp. And I can't see any sharps here. All I can see is flats all over the landscape. Now in this case, what we've got is a piece of music not using a key signature, but with all the flats of the key just put alongside the notes that need them. So we've got to do a little bit of detective work, but again, use the circle of fifths. Now this time what you might do is look on the flat side of the circle of fifths and just work round the flats. And let's check them against this piece of music. The first flat that you're going to meet is B flat. So have we got B flats in this piece? Well, yes, there's a B flat there. Okay, the second flat on the circle of fifths is E flat. Have we got E flat? Well, yes, we have, there's an E flat there. The next flat is A flat. Have we got A flat? There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, so plenty of A flats around. The next flat is D flat. Have we got D flat? Well, yes, at the beginning. There's a couple of D flats at the end. Hmm. The next flat is G flat. So have we got G flat? Well, yes, one, two, three, so G flats around. The next flat is C flat. So have we got C flat? Hmm. Well, here's C and it's not flat. So it looks as if we haven't quite gone that far around the circle of fifths. It looks as if we've used five flats. But apart from these five flats, if you look through, we haven't got any other kind of accidentals going on. So possibly a major key with five flats. Well, let's have a look. The major key with five flats is D flat major. If it were in B flat minor, the relative minor, well, we might not expect to see A flats. We might think that the A flat, the seventh degree of B flat minor, might be raised to an A natural. And there's no sign of that because we've got A flats galore. So this is possibly in D flat major. It begins with D flat. It finishes with two D flats. So that's kind of confirming D flat major. As I say, not all pieces will begin and end on that first note of the scale, the key note or the tonic, but just to make it clear, these do. So this one's in D flat major, but not using a key signature. Here's the chord of D flat major, and here is the melody, it goes like this. Okay, and finally, let's move on to number four. Three flats. So the circle of fifths will tell us that we're in E flat major or C minor. Or remember that little trick that I mentioned earlier, go back from the last flat to the last but one flat, E flat. So E flat major or C minor. Okay, we can see accidentals lurking around, can't we? So we're maybe beginning to think C minor. It starts on C, so that could help validate C minor. When we come here towards the end of the first phrase, we can see a B natural. Now that's helping us, isn't it? Because in C minor, the seventh note is B flat. If I raise that B flat by a semitone, it becomes B natural. So, oh great, it must be in C minor, the C start, the B natural. So let's go for C minor. However, before we make our final call on that, let's look at the second half where a few alarming things happen. Because I start here and then I've got E natural, F sharp, then I've got A natural. What's going on? Well, in this case, the first phrase is actually in C minor. 
but the second phrase modulates. In other words, it moves to a different key. So let's see what's happened. Well, the A natural is cancelling the A flat in the key signature. So it looks as if it's leaving me with a B flat in the E flat, but it doesn't really look as if it's in B flat major, does it? Because that's the key with two flats. So could it be in the minor key with two flats, which is G minor? Aha, uh -huh. two Gs to finish. So that could be something useful, couldn't it? If I'm in G minor, it's possible that I've raised the seventh degree of the scale. Well, the seventh note of the scale of G minor is F. So if I've raised it, it becomes F sharp. It's also possible I've raised the sixth degree of the scale. Well, the sixth degree of the scale is E flat. So raise that to semitone, it becomes E natural. So this is suddenly now looking like G minor. So here we have a piece that begins in the key of C minor and then modulates to the key of G minor. And that's something worth getting happy about because it happens in a lot of pieces of music that we start in one key and then we modulate to other keys, possibly before we come back to the home key again. So here's a chord of C minor, and here's the first phrase. And here's a chord of G minor, and here's the second phrase. So when you listen to the whole melody, I wonder if you can hear this modulation from C minor to G minor. Here we go. So there we are, a little quiz on key. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it helps to sharpen your skills in spotting the key of music that you're playing or helping you to think about writing in keys if you're a composer. Enjoy the world of keys. <laughs>